Welcome back. Now we're going to take a look at the structure of the course. Every course is laid out the same way, so it's easy for you to be able to navigate between the courses. The very first thing that you'll see is a welcome with the aim of the course and the learning outcomes that you should be able to achieve after completing this course. The next is listed the resources, and in this case, it is a textbook. And this course is based upon the textbook itself. We've also given you a study plan and the study plan shows each one of the chapters, what chapter and what page that chapter is on, and then the particular problems that you should work on. To view this study plan, just click on the link and it will bring up a PDF file with the course plan. So in this case, it tells you the chapter, it tells you the cases, and then the readings. To go back to the screen with the course, just press the arrow pointing to the left on your browser. And it brings you back to the course. After the study plan, there are some tips on how to maximize your study time. So we recommend that you do the following. The course is presented to you by chapters. Read the associated chapter in the textbook. Be sure to watch the video of the webinar presented by the professor and review the slideshow presentation. Read the recommended case, complete the questions and then read the answers that are provided. Try to complete all of the chapters before attempting the exam. The assessment for this particular course is a course exam and you'll be required to complete 50 multiple choice questions and that is worth 100% of your grade. Each multiple choice question is worth two marks for a total of 100 marks. You will have two hours to complete the exam and you will need to get a grade or a mark higher than 39 marks to pass the module. Again, it is recommended that you read the assigned chapters, review the slideshow presentations, and also listen to the webinars before attempting the exam. The exam is located at the end of the course. The structure of the course, as mentioned before, it is based upon the chapters of the textbook. So as you can see here, chapter one, globalization and international business, it gives you a brief explanation of the chapter, the learning objectives from that chapter. Then there are learning activities that are listed out that we recommend that you complete. So the learning activities that we have listed is to read chapter one, and it gives you the pages for the chapter. There is also a video that is presented by your professor. To play the video, all you need to do is click the arrow on the video to play the video. First topic. Uh, which is going to be on uh, on globalization of international uh, international business. So, and as you can see, it is just uh, a will... regular video player. You can pause and you can also play the video at any time that you wish. You are also given a copy of the slideshow, which is being presented by the professor in the video. And to access that slideshow, all you need to do is click on the link. And it's going to bring up the slideshow in a PDF file. And you can just scroll through the PowerPoint. To return back to the course, press the browser arrow in the upper right and left hand corner, pointing to the left.
It is also recommended that you read and complete a case, which is in this case called Transportation Logistics, Dubai Ports World. If you click on the case, study the file, it will bring up the case study itself that you are able to read through. And then there are several questions that appear at the bottom of the case study. Press the browser arrow to the left. That will bring you back to the course. Once you've completed the case study, you can then check your answers by going to the answers for the case, Transportation Logistics, Dubai Ports World. And then it will give you the question followed by the answer. To return back to the regular screen, you can actually just click on chapter one in your menu on your left hand side. And that will bring you back to the course at chapter one. Since this is a self-study course, it means that you will have to manage your own time. Recommended to read the chapter and then also watch the video. It will take some time for you to cover all of these chapters before attempting the course exam. If we scroll down to the bottom of the screen, or the bottom of the menu, you'll be taken to the course exam. And it just explains to you again, it's a 50 multiple choice question exam, and you will have two hours to complete. To pass the module, you must get 39 marks and above. Wish you luck in your studies. Take your time. Make sure that you study each one of the chapters because the course exam is made up of questions that relate to the chapters in the textbook. Best of luck.